away good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha television this Thursday morning I'm Ashwarya Kapoor and these are the headlines 20 killed over 100 injured in boiler blast at a national thermal power plant in Rai Bareilly chief minister announces compensation prime minister says situation being monitored as NDRF team sent to the spot Supreme Court favors setting up special courts to try politicians in criminal cases. Ask Centre to come up with scheme within six weeks. Vice President M. Venkaiah Naidu urges Maoists to shun violence and return to mainstream. Says Chhattisgarh's development a shining example for small states. Uzbek immigrant charged in New York attack accused of providing material support and resources to the Islamic State. Donald Trump vows to terminate a green card lottery through which suspect entered the United States. And India beat New Zealand in the first T20 match by 53 runs. Also a great run for shooters, clinch five medals including two at Commonwealth Shooting Championship. Our top story is from Rai Bareilly where 20 people were killed in a boiler blast at the National Thermal Power Plant in UP's Rai Bareilly district. The tragedy struck on Wednesday after a boiler in the electricity plant developed a snag. Now over 100 people are also reported to be injured and the death toll is expected to rise. At least 20 people, including three assistant general managers, were killed and over 100 injured in a massive boiler blast at the National Thermal Power Corporation's Unjahar plant in Rai Bareilly district. NDPC in a statement said the accident occurred in the ash handling section of the plant's unit number 6. Hot gases and steam escaped from the 500 megawatt unit at around 3.30 p.m. on Wednesday, affecting people working in the area. The plant was shut down as several workers were feared trapped. NTPC has initiated a probe to ascertain the reasons behind the blast. बॉयलर ट्रिप जब किया तो बॉयलर बंद हो गया फिर उस तीन बज के बाद में बॉयलर जब चालू हुआ एक में ब्लास्ट हो गया ठीक है मेरे दो आदमी मेरे मतलब काना में साथी जो जिस रूम में रहते हैं उस रूम में दो साथी मतलब डेट कर गए हैं ठीक है अब एक साथी को अभी पता नहीं चला यूपी चीफ मिनिस्टर योगी आदित्यनाथ लोगों को 25000 रुपए की आर्थिक सहायता भी दी जाएगी क्योंकि ये हादसा है जो अप्रत्याशित था दूर-दूर तक किसी को इस प्रकार की घटना की संभावना नहीं थी तो सहायक रूप से इसमें जो भीषण हादसा हुआ है ये सदमे का हादसा है दुखद हादसा है Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed deep pain at the accident he said the situation is being closely monitored Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi, who is on a tour to Gujarat, will visit Rai Bareilly, which is represented by Congress President Sonia Gandhi in Parliament. The centre has rushed NTPC's Chairman and Managing Director to the side. The government has also sent a 32-member team of the National Disaster Relief Force. The number of casualties is likely to go up. NTPC is here. The boiler duct is here. और उस डक के फटने के कारण जो मजदूर आसपास थे उस एरिया के वो चोटिल हुए हैं लगभग तेरह लोगों की डेड बॉडीज ये एनटीपीसी का जो हॉस्पिटल है यहाँ पे है जो बाकी मरीज हैं जो घायल हैं बर्न से वो रायबेली का जो जिला हॉस्पिटल है उसमें है The 1,550 megawatt plant generates around 640 megawatts of electricity and employs around 870 people. Power from the project is supplied to Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab, Rajasthan, Chandigarh, Delhi and Uttarakhand. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV.
On to some other news now. The Supreme Court has uh, favoured a setting up of uh, special courts to exclusively deal with criminal cases involving politicians. The Apex Court uh, has directed the centre to place before it a scheme in this regard within six weeks and said it will be in the national interest. The court also sought details of involving politicians who have criminal cases lodged against them. It said that details of the 1,581 cases involving MPs and MLAs declared by them before the 2014 elections be provided to it. Also, details of criminal cases lodged against politicians from 2014 till date have been sought. The court was hearing petitions seeking to declare provisions of the representation of People's Act barring convicted politicians from contesting elections for six years after serving jail term as uh, ultra-virus to the constitution. During the hearing, the centre said that a decriminalisation of politics has to be done. It also added that it was uh, actively considering the recommendation by the Election Commission and the Law Commission for a lifetime ban on convicted politicians. I am the administrative minister of the Election Commission and it is a pending issue. I don't think it would be desirable for me to make any comment except to highlight the point that the polity need to speak in one voice to contain criminality in electoral process. Decriminalization of politics is very important and it is definitely a separate court to be very useful because it takes a lot of cases to dispose of cases and there are many cases that are pending. For all these issues, how much fast track court will be made in one year? How many judges will be appointed? How many public prosecutors will be appointed? उनका पूरा क्या आपका जो प्रपोजल है वो सारा प्रपोजल आप लेके आइए तो केंद्र सरकार ने उस पर छः महीने का टाइम मांगा है इसलिए तेरह दिसंबर की डेट फिक्स किया है अगली सुनवाई इस पर तेरह दिसंबर होगी एंड द यूनियन कैबिनेट हैज गिवन इट्स अप्रूवल फॉर इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ अ बिल इन पार्लियामेंट टू अमेंड द नेशनल काउंसिल फॉर टीचर्स एजुकेशन एक्ट नाइनटीन द कैबिनेट ऑल्सो अप्रूव द सेल ऑफ इट्स एंटायर सेवेंटी स्टेक इन रेजिंग कॉरपोरेशन ऑफ इंडिया लिमिटेड the decision will fetch about 1400 crore rupees to the government. A bill seeking to grant retrospective recognition to central, state and union territory universities conducting teaching education courses without recognition has been given the green nod for introduction in parliament by the union cabinet. The recognition is being given as a one-time measure to ensure that the future of the students is not jeopardized. Meanwhile, the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs accorded approval for implementation of special banking arrangement for 10,000 crore rupees for payment of outstanding claims on account of fertilizer subsidies in the year 2016-17. It also approved the continuation of the Rashtra Krishi Vikas Yojana for three years till 2020. The financial allocation of this scheme will be 15,722 crore rupees with the objective of making farming as a remunerative economic activity by risk mitigation and promoting agribusiness entrepreneurship. The cabinet also approved revised price of ethanol for the public sector oil marketing companies. The approval will facilitate the continued policy of the government in providing price stability and remunerative prices for ethanol suppliers. It will also help in reducing dependency on crude oil imports, saving in foreign exchange and benefits to the environment. The Union Cabinet also approved trade agreement between India and Ethiopia for strengthening and promoting trade and economic ties. Approval was also accorded for agreement between India and Armenia for mutual cooperation and assistance in custom matters. Reporting from Delhi, with cameraperson Prashanta, I'm Kruti Mishra for Rajya Sabha Television. And India's first consignment of wheat assistance to Afghanistan reached Chabahar on Wednesday. Now, MEA spokesperson Ravish Kumar tweeted on the arrival of the first consignment. A welcome ceremony was held at the Chabahar port on the landmark occasion attended by dignitaries from India, Iran and Afghanistan. The shipment was flagged off on Sunday. The Jabahar port, located in the Sitan Baluchistan province in the south of Iran, can be easily accessed from India's western coast by bypassing Pakistan. Now, six more wheat shipments will be sent from India to Afghanistan over the next few months. And back home in an effort to increase the pension coverage in the country, the Finance Ministry has raised the maximum age of joining the National Pension Scheme or the NPS for the private sector to 65 years.
Now, in a statement, the finance ministry said that any Indian citizen, resident or non-resident between the age of 60 to 65 years can join NPS and continue up to the age of 70 years. Now, with this decision, late subscribers to the National Pension Scheme will be able to avail its benefits. Earlier, the maximum age to subscribe was 60 years. And the centre aims to double the number of companies registered with the Employee Provident Fund organisation next year. Union Labour and Employment Minister Santosh Kumar Gangwar said that around 10 lakh companies across the country have registered with EPFO. The ministry has set up a target to increase it to 20 lakh companies. The minister also encouraged more employers to register so that their employees may benefit from the EPFO housing scheme for PF members. कि 10 लाख एस्टेब्लिशमेंट और साढ़े चार करोड़ खाता धारकों की संख्या को और अधिक बढ़ाने की आवश्यकता है और मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि जीएसटी जिसमें करीब करीब एक करोड़ के आसपास पंजीकरण रजिस्ट्रेशन हो गया है ये मैं आपके संज्ञान में लाना चाहूँगा इससे पहले 80 लाख थे और इसके साथ ही ईपीएफ अपनी स्कीम का कवरेज भी बढ़ाने की दिशा में लगातार प्रयास रहते हैं on to some other news, the Interstate Council mandated to investigate and advise on disputes between the states has been reconstituted. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is its chairman and it has six union ministers and all chief ministers as members. The union ministers include Rajnath Singh, Sushma Swaraj, Arun Jaitley, Nitin Gadkari, Thawar Chand Gehloth and Nirmala Sitharaman. Eight other union ministers have been made permanent invitees to the council. The government also reconstituted the Standing Committee of the Interstate Council under Home Minister Rajnath Singh. Four union ministers and seven chief ministers are the members of the Standing Committee. The Standing Committee will recommend matters for consideration of the council, process all the matters pertaining to the centre-state relations before they are taken up for consideration in the council. And time now for all the election news from Himachal Pradesh and Gujarat. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address two election rallies in Himachal Pradesh today. He will address a rally in Rehan in the Fatehpur Assembly constituency in Kangra district and another in Dholakua in Simar, Sirmor. The Prime Minister will also address rallies in Sundarnagar in Mandi, Rayat in Shahpur and Palampur in Kangra district on 4th of November and in Kullu and Una on 5th of November. The BJP President Amit Shah, who has already addressed six election meetings so far, will address more meetings in Una and Kangra on 5th of November. Remember, Himachal Pradesh is going to polls on 9th of November. And campaigning in the state intensified with the top BJP leaders raising their poll pitch in key constituencies. Now, BJP President Amit Shah addressed a rally in Monday on Wednesday where he targeted the ruling Congress in the state. To exuding confidence that the BJP will win the Hill State, Amit Shah said that Himachal Pradesh would witness not a wave but a BJP tsunami. विकास की हवा हिमाचल के बलून के अंदर भाजपा भरने का भरसक प्रयास करती है। अगले पांच साल में कांग्रेस आकर भ्रष्टाचार का छेद करकर हवा निकालने का काम कर देती है। मगर इस बार एक ऐसी सरकार बनाइए कि 20 साल तक कांग्रेसियों को सपना ना आए कि हिमाचल के अंदर हमारी सरकार कभी बन सकती है 2014 से 2014 से मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में भाजपा का विजय रथ घूमते 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 अब हिमाचल और सिराज में आकर यहां पर आज खड़ा हो गया है and Home Minister Rajnath Singh also campaigned in Mandi. Now, addressing a public rally, he exhorted that tainted political leaders must resign from their posts, adding that they should not accept any post till they are absolved from all the charges. I want to appeal to all the right parties. If anyone is on any side, if anyone is on any side, and in the first place, or in the first place, if anyone is on any side, 
तो उस नेता को चाहिए कि अपने पद से दे दे और जब तक वह आरोप मुक्त न हो जाए वह पद किसी भी सूरत में स्वीकार न करे मोर न्यूज फ्रॉम पोल बाउंड हिमाचल प्रदेश कांग्रेस पार्टी रिलीज इट्स इलेक्शन मैनिफेस्टो ऑन वेंसडे न सम ऑफ द प्रोमिस मेड बाय द पार्टी इंक्लूड इंटरेस्ट फ्री लोन्स टू फार्मर्स creation of a 1 lakh 50000 jobs in the government sector and free lop laptops to 50000 college students the party has also promised to restore the pre 2004 pension scheme regularize contractual employees after 2 years enhance the daily wages and social security pension as well as appointing an anti corruption grievances commissioner decentralization of administrative and financial powers down to the panchayat level as well as the continuation of the food subsidy scheme to the control uh, price rise are some of the other promises that find mention in the congress's election manifesto hamara jo manifesto hai wo bahut aage hai har cheez mein aage hai wo janta ke hak mein hai सरकारी कर्मचारी का हक में है किसानों के हक में है मजदूरों के हक में है और और प्रदेश को हर दिशा में आगे ले जाने के लिए और विकास की को आगे बढ़ाने का एक संकल्प है हमने जो प्रोमिस किए हैं पिछले पाँच साल में जो हमने काम किया है उसको देखते हुए अगला एक और ज़्यादा लोग की सेवा करने के लिए जो ज़्यादा उसमें स्कीमें बताई है नए नए युवकों के लिए रास्ता बताया पेंशनरों के लिए बताया है सैनिकों के लिए बताया है तो इस तरह से ये राज्य और भी विजय की ओर चला है न्यूज फ्रॉम पोल बाउंड गुजरात इन कांग्रेस वाइस प्रेसिडेंट राहुल गांधी प्ले डाउन इंडिया स्टीप प्रमोशन इन द वर्ल्ड बैंक रैंकिंग ऑन द ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस by saying that everyone knows the truth here is a report on his campaign in the poll bound state of gujarat congress vice president rahul gandhi began the third leg of his navsarjan yatra on wednesday while addressing a public rally in baruch rahul gandhi criticized the latest ease of doing business ranking released by the world bank on tuesday he claimed that there wasn't any ease in doing business as demonetization and gst had destroyed the economy हिंदुस्तान में ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस में बहुत इम्प्रूवमेंट आया है मगर अगर जेटली जी अपने ऑफिस से पांच मिनट बाहर जाए और यहाँ किसी दुकानदार के पास चले जाए या किसी छोटे व्यापारी के पास चले जाए स्मॉल एंड मीडियम बिजनेस के पास चले जाए तो उनको समझ में आ जाएगी हिंदुस्तान में ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस इम्प्रूव हुई Rahul Gandhi is also confident that the ruling party the BJP will get a jolt on election day. He also criticized the Gujarat model of development saying the government could have waived off farmers loans instead of funding the Tata Nano project. Tata Nano ke liye Narendra Modi ji ne 33000 crore rupaye bank loan diya. Aur wo bhi takriban free mein bilkul kam se kam rate mein. आपकी जमीन ली टाटा कंपनी को दी तैतीस हजार करोड़ रुपए में गुजरात के किसानों का कर्जा माफ किया जा सकता है गरीबों की जमीन लो बिजली लो पानी लो उद्योगपतियों को दो और फिर उद्योगपतियों से कुछ मिलता नहीं है यह है गुजरात मॉडल नरेंद्र मोदी जी का चीफ मिनिस्टर गुजरात का द कांग्रेस पार्टी इज होपिंग टू कॉर्नर द बीजेपी इन द अपकमिंग असेंबली पोल्स इन प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी होम स्टेट वेद बीजेपी हैज रूल फॉर नियरली फिफ्टीन ईयर्स ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी News from down south the BJP president uh, will kick uh, start the party's campaign in Karnataka today by flagging off uh, an 84 day yatra led by its uh, chief ministerial candidate BS Yadurappa Amit Shah will flag off the yatra in Bengaluru in the presence of various uh, state leaders and union ministers it is expected to cover more than 7500 kilometers passing through all the 224 constituencies in the state 
It will conclude on the 28th of January with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's public rally in Bengaluru. Remember, the state goes to polls early next year. And Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has urged Maoists to shun violence and to return to mainstream through democracy. On the occasion of the 18th Foundation Day of Chhattisgarh, the Vice President was in Raipur on Wednesday. Now, in his address, the Vice President said that the Chhattisgarh is a shining example in the development of small states. He also mentioned the Naxal problem in the state and said that uh, Naxals uh, should use a ballot and not bullet. The Vice President also remembered uh, former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee's contribution for the formation of Chhattisgarh. The Vice President also inaugurated a newly built forest headquarter of the state, Aranyak Bhavan. <laughs> आपको कोई क्रांतिकारी परिवर्तन होगा नहीं लोकतंत्र में बुलेट से ज्यादा बैलेट पावरफुल है बैलेट के द्वारा परिवर्तन ला सकते हैं इंडिया हैज प्रेस्ड भूटान्स रोल इन द रीसेंट डोकलाम कॉन्फ्लिक्ट विद चाइना प्रेसिडेंट रामनाथ कोविंद हु मेट भूटानीज किंग जिगमे खेसर नामगेल वांगचोक इन दिल्ली ऑन वेंसडे सेड द द मैनर इन व्हिच बोथ इंडिया एंड भूटान्स टुक टू टुगेदर in the doklam area is a clear testimony to our friendship the bhutan king is on a four day visit to india for consultations on security defense and economic issues the royal couple met president ramnath kovind at the rashtrapati bhavan yesterday both the leaders also discussed the recent happenings on the indo china border and the future course of relationship between the two countries the bhutanese king was personally involved in resolving issues emanating during doklam situation The king also met with Prime Minister Narendra Modi at his official residence. The Prime Minister hosted a dinner for the visiting dignitary who had earlier held meetings with Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj as well. He is scheduled to meet Finance Minister Arun Jaitley and the Defence Minister Nirmala Sitharaman today. An Indian and Kazakhstan's armies will engage in a 14-day joint exercise in Himachal Pradesh from today. The move is to strengthen bilateral relations and exchange skills and experiences. Now, this is the second joint military exercise between the two countries. The first joint military exercise was held in Kazakhstan in 2016. The third battalion of the 11th Gorkha Rifles are participating in the exercise. An Ajay Bisaria, a 1987 batch Indian Forest Service uh, officer, has been named as India's new High Commissioner to Pakistan. And Bisaria, who is uh, presently Ambassador of India to Poland, will replace uh, Gautam Bambavli, who has been serving as India's envoy to Pakistan since January 2016. Now, an IS officer of uh, the 1987 batch, uh, Bisaria was in charge of the Eurasia desk that looks after India's ties with Russia and the Central Asian republics prior to his appointment as India's ambassador to Poland. Let's get you some international news and as big immigrant has been charged by the US prosecutors with causing the deaths of at least 8 people in New York by mowing them down in a truck. Saiful Osipov is also accused of providing material support and resources to Islamic State group. Now, after being arrested, Saiful has now confessed that he began planning the attack a year ago, carrying out the attack according to the instructions that he found posted online by the Islamic State group. Meanwhile, U.S. President Donald Trump said that he was taking steps to end the diversity lottery program, the immigration system under which the suspect had entered the United States. 29-year-old Saifullo Saipov, suspect of Tuesday's attack in Manhattan, appeared in a federal court. Saipov told investigators that he was inspired by Islamic State videos and began planning an attack a year ago. Authorities recovered 90 Islamic State propaganda videos and 4,000 similar images from his phones. An Uzbekistan immigrant, Saipov, has been charged with providing material support to IS and violence. Just about 24 hours. After Saipov's attack, 
we now have him charged with federal crimes of terrorism. The complaint filed today charges Saipov with two counts. First, material support of a terrorist organization, that being ISIS. And second, a federal charge of violence and destruction of a motor vehicle with willful disregard for the safety of human life that resulted in multiple deaths. In New York's deadliest terror attack since 9-11, the suspect drove a rented truck onto a perfect cycle path just blocks from the World Trade Center, mowing down eight and injuring more than a dozen. He then crashed the truck into a school bus, left the vehicle brandishing imitation firearms and was shot by police. Authorities have begun identifying the victims. Five were from Argentina high school students, two were Americans and one was from Belgium. My priority in accordance with instructions of my president and my foreign minister and the rest uh, is that uh, uh, we need to ensure the, 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 um, the well-being of the family, the privacy and um, to respect their wishes in terms of what they would like to um, do with, uh, uh, their, their, uh, the, with the victims uh, that are their relatives. New York has police presence at key transport hubs. Along with additional uniformed and plainclothes police on duty at Sunday's New York Marathon. U.S. President Donald Trump ordering Homeland Securities to step up the extreme vetting program. Trump saying that he is taking steps to end the diversity lottery program, the immigration system under which the suspect entered the country. It's very simple. What we are demanding is merit-based immigration. We want people that are going to help our country. We want people that are going to keep our country safe. We don't want lotteries where the wrong people are in the lotteries and we want a merit-based system and we do not want chain migration. Terrorism, once again, we've seen the evil face of terror in our own borders, but this is a face that knows no borders and certainly Belgium, Europe and other countries have had to deal with this uh, evil that confronts us from time to time. Uh, we welcome and appreciate the strong coalition of all partners in this fight against terrorism globally, and we will continue that fight until we can eliminate this threat to all American citizens and our friends and allies around the world as well. So, The tactic of turning an ordinary vehicle into a lethal weapon is becoming increasingly common. Since 2014, there have been 15 vehicular attacks in the West by the jihadist terrorists, killing 142 people. Figures including Tuesday's attack in Manhattan. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Let's get you some sports news now. India defeated New Zealand in the first T20 of the three-match series at the Firosha Kotla Stadium in the national capital, leading the series now 1-0. The hosts beat the visitors by 53 runs. Now, this is India's first ever win over Kiwis in the T20 internationals. Earlier put into back the team India scored 202 for three in 20 overs. There was also bid farewell to veteran cricketer Ashish Nehra. The second T20 match will be played at Rajkot on 4th of November. Good news from the field of shooting as well, as ace Indian pistol shooters clinched as many as five medals, including two gold, two silver and one bronze at the ongoing Commonwealth Shooting Championship in Australia. In the 10-meter Men's air rifle event, uh, Shahzar Rizvi won gold medal while Omkar Singh bagged silver and Jitu Rai clinched bronze. In the 10 meters women's air rifle event, Pooja Ghatkar bagged gold while her country mate uh, Anju Momodgil won the silver medal. India now has a medal tally of three golds, three silvers and a bronze. That's all uh, in this edition of news. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day ahead.